Okay, today we're going to show that the um, Schrodinger equation uh, is um, not uh, uh, Lorentz uh, or uh, Galilean uh, uh, invariant. Um, so let's get started here. Um, here we have Schrodinger's equation right here. And uh, what we're going to do is um, uh, find, uh, we're going to do um, the Lorentz uh, transformations first. And um, so we'll, um, we need to find psi t according to the Lorentz transformations. Now, I already did this in another one of my lectures for the electromagnetic wave. Um, but since it's just a generic function, uh, we can use that that Lorentz transformation for uh, for psi, since we're just taking the psi with respect to t. Actually, what I'm going to do is show you uh, on my other lecture uh, who psi xx is, that it's this person right here, um, where uh, gamma is equal to, of course, the relativistic 1 over the square root of 1 minus v squared uh, over c squared, uh, the square root of. Um, so that's what gamma is. v is the velocity, and that's the velocity. Um, I've put a little dash on this V here because it's not a, that's not velocity, that's the potential energy uh, times psi, of course. So I'm just going to read off the uh, Schrodinger's equation normally. It's um, I complex I, um, psi with respect to, uh, partial derivative psi with respect to T, uh, H bar uh, my, uh, equals a negative H bar squared divided by 2 times the mass uh, times uh, the second partial derivative of psi uh, with respect to x plus uh, the potential energy with a little dash, that means it's potential energy, um, uh, times psi, okay? Whereas a v, if you ever see v, that will be velocity, but if you have a v with a little slash, that's potential energy, okay? That's velocity there. Okay, so uh, let's transform psi xx just real quickly, according to my previous lecture, which was called... Uh, I'll just show it to you real quickly. It was, should be called something like the electromagnetic wave equation, Lorentz transformation invariance, uh, something like that. Um, you know, either look at mine or look at somebody else's. But on mine, um, I'm going to show you uh, uh, way down here. I have transformed psi xx uh, equals to um, uh, phi x prime x prime gamma squared plus... Um, uh, v, velocity squared, divided by uh, a speed of light to the fourth, gamma squared, uh, phi, um, I'm sorry, this is, by the way, phi xx, I, I might have said psi, um, <laughs> phi uh, uh, t prime, t prime, partial derivatives, two partial derivatives, uh, minus uh, 2v um, gamma squared, divided by uh, speed of light squared, c squared, uh, phi uh, x prime uh, t prime, okay? So this is phi xx, and we're going to use that to substitute into Schrodinger's equation all of this stuff right here. So uh, make sure you write that down, and I'm about to show you that that is what I wrote right here. In for psi xx, I wrote, a, I wrote this uh, phi uh, x prime x prime gamma squared plus v squared gamma squared over c to the fourth. Um, phi t prime t prime minus 2v gamma squared phi uh, x prime t prime um, c squared. So all of that is the transformation of uh, psi xx uh, in terms of uh, Lorentz transformations. And uh, you can, uh, I derived it in this lecture right here. So again, just to show you again, this is what I typed in for um, uh, that quantity. Okay. So I didn't want to go through all this again. I figured uh, you can go and explore that if you want. Okay, so we just substituted for psi xx this. Uh, there's that guy plus uh, potential energy psi plus potential energy psi right there. So the only, And there's the i, there's the i, there's the h bar, there's the h bar. So the only thing we have to do is do uh, psi t here. And I did psi t in that other lecture too, so I'm going to show it to you real quickly. And... Um, and actually, it's um, uh, uh, well, 
Um, psi T is, is right here. Here's Psi T. Actually, in the other lecture, I did uh, Psi T T. Um, so it's uh, Phi uh, X prime. That, there it is, Phi X prime. Uh, and then a Phi T prime is right there, Phi T prime. So we just need to know. I didn't do it here because I had a... I needed to figure out phi t t, so I didn't, I didn't stop here, I went on. So we just need to know what x prime t is and what t prime t is and make sure, uh, t prime t is equal to gamma and x prime t is equal to negative v gamma. Is that true or not? We'll again look at my lecture. Let me flip the page. And sure enough, um, uh, what do we say? The first one is x prime t. Uh, there's x prime, uh, I'm sorry, uh, there's x prime t is equal to negative v, and then 1 over the square root of all that stuff is gamma. Or right here, it's negative v gamma. So there's that guy, x prime t was that. And um, the gamma, I'm uh, sorry, uh, the other one was the uh, t prime t, I believe. Uh, yeah, it was t prime t. So this needs to be t prime t, so we'll look in my lecture, and t prime t is equal to 1 over the square root of all that 1 minus v squared this, which equals gamma. So that does belong right there, according to um, uh, this derived formula uh, right here. Uh, so uh, again, uh, who is psi t? He's phi x prime, that's this guy. x prime t I just showed you is this guy, plus uh, phi prime t is this guy. A phi t prime, I'm sorry, partial derivative with respect to t prime is this guy. And then a t prime t is equal to gamma right there. So I just, trans Lawrence transforms uh, psi t into this, and tra Lawrence transformed uh, psi xx into all of this stuff right here. Everything else stayed the same, so we get this. And I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. We'll divide by gamma. There's a gamma, gamma, gamma squared, gamma squared, gamma squared. So we can divide by gamma. Uh, is what I'll do. And so um, what we'll do here is, um, let's see, th this is the equation we get. Let's make sure everybody is here. Um, this phi uh, t prime is this island right here. So i h bar phi t prime is right here. And we divide it by gamma, so gamma is gone. So this is right here. Uh, this person is that island right there. Um, because it's negative h bar squared times phi x prime x prime. And then we divide it by gamma, but this is gamma squared, so it'll be gamma. So this is right here. Uh, this is right there. And um, these two should be these two right here. And uh, um, uh, notice I pulled out a negative h bar squared, uh, 2mc squared, so and a v. And a gamma I pulled out of this. So, um, so, uh, if you take out a v, it'll be one leave v left over. c squared will give you a c to the fourth. Uh, there's the 2m right there. There's the h bar squared right there. There's the negative right there. So the signs will stay the same. And I took out, remember, I took the v and the c squared out. So it'll just be, um, uh, minus two, uh, uh, phi, uh, with respect to, uh, 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 x prime and t prime phi with respect to x prime and t prime is right there all right so those two are these two if you take that stuff out uh, i'll read this off really quickly it's a minus h bar squared v velocity uh, gamma uh, uh, divided by two mass uh, c squared parentheses v velocity uh, phi t prime t prime divided by c squared mi minus 2 phi x prime t prime. And then this person is uh, over here. It's this guy right here. This times this is i h bar. There's the i h bar. There's the v. There's the v. Uh, whoops, we made a mistake. I made a mistake here because we divided by gamma. So gamma's gone. Gamma's gone. So when you scoot it over, the gamma's gone. That's why, I've, as I've sold, said a million times, always look, go over your teaching something is a good way to find your mistakes. Okay, so let's go through it again. I h bar, I h bar. Um, phi x prime, phi x prime, v, uh, v. 
And this is a negative island over here, so when you scoot it over to this side, it'll turn into a positive island. So hopefully this is all correct. Hopefully you won't find any more mistakes. I think we took everybody into account. Alrighty. Um, well, uh, we can see um, the, the, the Schrodinger's equation has this, and this matches this, so that looks good so far, equals, and this looks good so far, and this looks good so far, but we have a gamma right here. And that means that this, and there's no way to get rid of that gamma. If you divide that gamma, it'll appear over here, divided by gamma, it'll screw up. Uh, this side won't look like this side. So, so right now, this gamma, it does not making this look like this. Now, on top of that, uh, let's see, this looks good. So that, this matches this. But uh, after those two islands on, on shortages, there's no more islands. Well, we have all of this to deal with, you know, uh, all of all of that stuff to deal with. And um, and that definitely is going to cause there's no way of getting rid of all this uh, algebra and, and making this uh, look like this, as we did in our other lectures on invariance. Um, for formulas. In other words, whenever you do a Lorentz or a Galilean transformation, um, and you, uh, you do the transformation and plug them in the, the functions, uh, the partial derivatives of the function, uh, the, this equation has to look exactly like this one, except it just has a phi instead of, uh, the psi, a new letter uh, there, okay? So, um, the Schrodinger's equation did not, um, uh, 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 transform according to the Lorentz transformations. Um, so it's not in, it's, it is not invariant according to Lorentz transformations. Let's see if it is with Galilean. Um, well, I just, uh, uh, um, I, I, I'm just gonna use the same, uh, the same one, he, the same, uh, equation here. Um, so we just have to get rid of the psi t, and, uh, here I have psi t right here. But it's a Galilean transformation, so don't use this psi t. you got to use a different psi t, a Galilean uh, transformation of psi t, which I have uh, right here. I have that. Le I, I gave this a lecture, again, for the electromagnetic uh, wave equation. I did a Galilean transformation. But the, the phi t is going to be the same. So let's try to find the phi. There's a phi t right down here. Um, so notice that phi t is phi t prime, um, uh, t prime t plus uh, phi x prime, x prime t. Now, let's just get this quickly. Who's t prime t? t prime t is 1. So that's going to be 1, which means there's just going to be this guy. And who's x prime uh, t? Who's that guy? Uh, x prime t equals a negative v. So we're going to see a negative v over here. And we're going to see a 1 uh, for... Um, and we plug in a, let's see, let's make it a little bit more, uh, we're going to be a plug in a 1 for all of this stuff, and we're going to plug in a negative V for all of this stuff. So what you should see in my transformation is um, uh, phi T prime times 1, phi T prime uh, plus phi X prime, and then a negative V. So is that what we see here? Um, phi T prime times 1 plus phi x prime times negative v. Yep, I transformed phi, uh, psi t according to Galilean, not Lorentz transformation, and it became this. And I, I need to transform a psi x x Galilean. So don't put in all that stuff. That's the that's the Lorentz transformation. I need to use the Galilean transformation. And uh, uh, phi x x uh, Galilean uh, is, uh, works out to be, uh, is just this right here. It's very simple. Uh, phi x x Galilean equals phi x prime x prime, uh, according to Galilean, uh, Galilean transformation because, uh, it equals all this mess, but once you type in all the x prime and x prime's this, I'm not gonna waste your time with that. It just turns out to be this. So who is psi x x? Uh, it's just phi x prime x prime, okay? Okay, so we transform the psi t is this guy, and the psi xx is this guy. Everybody else is the same, i h bar, i h bar, uh, negative uh, h bar squared 2m, negative h bar squared 2m, uh, plus a potential, potential function, not v, uh, phi here. All right? 
So with just Galilean transform Schrodinger's equation, according to Galilean uh, transformations, coordinate system. Uh, and uh, let's see what happens here. Well, uh, let, let's see. Uh, this I, um, I h bar psi t prime is right there. This times, uh, let's see, let's do this one right here. This is right here. So that looks pretty good. Uh, uh, whoops. Uh, let me, uh, I made another mistake here. That's X prime here. Um, so actually, so again, this is right here, and this island is right here, and this island is right here. Here's the potential energy V slash uh, phi is right here. So guess what? This equals this plus this is the Schrodinger's equation. But we have a problem. We have this island also. Who's that island? It's this times this. This times this is I H bar uh, V. Um, uh, so, uh, boy, we we left a lot. Of, left a lot of the stuff. Uh, I. That's because I added it afterwards. Uh, uh, H bar and V. Okay, so let's go over it again. I H bar V. I h bar v uh, phi x prime phi x prime. I'm sorry, you can't read that very well. That is phi x prime uh, is this guy right here. Uh, alrighty, and so we've got all the people. Then it's negative on this side. If you scoot it over, it'll become positive on this side. All right. So we have this island right here. Well, all of this is Schrodinger's equation plus this term right here is not going to make it Schrodinger's equation. So, and there's no way algebraically to make this go away in any manner. So uh, we came, we get, we actually we came a lot closer with Galilean to the original Schrodinger's equation than we did with uh, Lorentz transformations. It's kind of interesting, you know. Uh, all right. So, anyways. Um, I hope you can make that out. I'll read this off to you very quickly. I h bar phi t prime looks a lot like uh, Schrodinger's equation equals equals negative h bar squared over two m uh, phi x prime x prime. Uh, this looks a lot like Schrodinger's plus uh, potential v slash potential energy times phi potential energy times psi. That looks good. But then you have plus v uh, phi uh, with respect to x prime uh, partial derivative i h bar, so that's going to be a problem. Now this does not look, did not transform into a Schrodinger's equation just with uh, phi's instead of uh, psi's there. All right, well that will do it. And again, the conclusion is uh, Schrodinger's equation uh, transforms neither uh, by Lorentzian transformations or Galilean, and it's invariant. It's not invariant uh, to either uh, uh, system. I hope you enjoyed this lecture, and I look forward to any comments at the bottom. Thank you very much for watching.